You guys must have heard terms like layer 1, layer 2, side chains, layer 3, layer 0 and so on. And maybe you have gone ahead to read a few articles about it, but um, you have not really grasped what it is. Today, I'm going to help you fully understand layers so that at the end of this video, you'll be like, I get it now. This is the first video in this series. You also get to know what the rest of the series is going to look like. To so understand layers, we'll look first at the problem that existed whose solution led to the creation of the blockchain. Then, the problem that emanated from the creation of the blockchain whose solution can be categorized into blockchain layers. Then, the levels and the solutions at each layers, and finally, how we are gonna progress with the rest of the series. So, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon because this is gonna be really, really interesting. Let's get to it. Why was blockchain created? Man, from the beginning of time, has transacted with one another on a person-to-person -person basis. As civilization grew and transaction became larger, more advanced and somewhat complex, man needed a third party, a middleman, to govern and mediate this transaction. Someone he can trust to have his back or best interest at heart. So, this middleman came in form of banks, governments, lawyers, and so on. Unfortunately, man became a subject to this middleman. His control was hijacked, the middleman became expensive, and they dictated the process and acted not necessary in the interest of man. Though this is the case, civilization has grown to the point that man cannot do without this middle man. So what is the solution? The solution came with the invention of the technology called blockchain. The blockchain is a decentralized technology that takes out the middleman. I don't need to have a bank account. I can have a wallet and transact with my fellow man peer to peer. I don't necessarily need a lawyer I can have a smart contract coded into the blockchain that executes when certain actions take place as signed by the parties involved. We don't necessarily need a government. We can have DAOs, decentralized autonomous organization, where anyone can take part in the governing and decision-making process. The first application of this technology is in money, which is Bitcoin, the first decentralized cryptocurrency. Another is Ethereum, which is a decentralized computer that allows you to build smart contracts on it. This is cool, right? Well, not really, because the technology has a problem. It cannot scale. Here's what I mean. Visa can process 20,000 transactions per second why Bitcoin can only process seven transactions per second. If this then is the case, how then can there be mass adoption of this technology? But wait, can't we just tweak the technology and make it fast? Well, we could, but it is not that simple because we might be sacrificing something else. And this will take us to the blockchain trilemma. The blockchain trilemma is a belief that decentralized network can only provide two of these three benefits at a given time. That is decentralization, scalability, and security. Scalability is the ability to handle a high volume of transaction. Security refers to how secure data on the blockchain is from various forms of attack and decentralization asks the question, is the network controlled by a few people? What the trilemma is saying is that, if security is a constant, then we have to sacrifice decentralization to increase scalability or sacrifice scalability to increase decentralization. However, the trilemma has not been proven or disproven. So guys, man, wants a decentralized network 
governed by no one and needs no third party. But the problem is that it cannot scale. How do we solve this problem? Should we compromise on one of the elements of this trilemma or find a way to scale without the compromise? Let's look at how different blockchain projects have tried to solve this problem by looking at different layers of the blockchain network. There are basically four layers. We have layer zero, layer one, layer two, layer three. Layer zero refers to the components that helps to make the blockchain a reality. These are the physical and the intellectual infrastructure of the blockchain. They include the hardware, the internet, and the human thought process and the concepts that went into building the blockchain. Layer one is the foundation layer of the blockchain. A blockchain is layer one when it processes and finalizes transaction on its own blockchain. The first of this kind is Bitcoin and its solution is decentralized money. Another is Ethereum and its solution is to make decentralized application possible. Bitcoin and Ethereum uses what we call proof of work consensus mechanism. This proof of work is highly decentralized, which means it cannot be hijacked by an entity or group of persons, government or institution. Thus, people have confidence in it. It is also secured, but it is not scalable. It leads to high transaction fee and high electricity cost to run. To give you perspective, Bitcoin mining consumes more electricity than countries like Argentina and the UAE. To solve this problem, other layer one blockchain emerged using the proof of stake instead of the proof of work. For better understanding, I'll be comparing these two in the next video. But basically, proof of stake sacrifices decentralization to increase scalability. So, POS validation of transaction are handed over to a few set of people who have the tokens in millions of dollars worth. BNB Smart Chain, for example, requires you to stake at least 10,000 BNB in the process of becoming a validator. If a validator attacks or abuses the network, he might lose half or all of his token. So, proof of stake blockchains are highly scalable. For example, BNB Smart Chain transaction can handle up to 300 transactions per second, Ripple 1,500 transactions per second, and Solana 65,000 transactions per second. But a lot of people do not have confidence in their blockchain that sacrifices decentralization. This then leads to layer two networks. So for layer two, layer two blockchains try to scale proof of work layer one blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So they are built on layer one blockchain. They inherit its security, improves its functionality by taking some of the loads off. Let's use this example to give you more perspective. Let's say it costs me $10 to send 0.01 BTC from wallet A to wallet B. It will cost me the same $10 to send one BTC and the same $10 to send 50 BTC. So it's the same fee irrespective of the number of BTC. Let's say I own a business where I need to send BTC to and from my customer multiple times a day and in each case I have to pay this $10 transaction fee irrespective of the amount I send. So if we did 30 transactions, we must have spent $300 in fee. To avoid this, we could choose to use a layer 2 network. So for this 30 transaction, we will be paying fractions of a cent in fee. At the end of the day, the sum total of this transaction will be settled on the layer 1 blockchain. This means that for the 30 transactions in this case, we will pay only $10 and a few cents. And of course, with higher volume of transactions 
handled. You guys should know that I made this really, really simple because there are various layer two scaling strategies, including nested chain, state channel, side chain, rollups, and so on and so forth. Examples of L2s include Lightning Network, Omnilayer, Polygonmatic, Stellar Network, and so on. Layer three. Layer three is the application layer. This is where dApps are built. This layer gives the blockchain real world application. This includes dApps like Uniswap and PancakeSwap, which are decentralized exchanges. Compound, a lending and borrowing platform. Tencent, a blockchain ETF, and all DeFi projects and so on. There are literally thousands of them. Layer 3 networks can be built on layer 1 or layer 2. So guys, these are blockchain layers. I hope you have a better understanding of it now. So, what we're going to be doing in the rest of this series is to take a blockchain project in each of this layer and explain them. We will start with Bitcoin and Ethereum and Solana and so on. This series promises to be very educational. So make sure you are subscribed if you have not. Click on that by icon so you don't miss any of our content. Share with your family and friends to take part in this learning process and like the video. It is really important you like the video. When you like the video, go go realize this. It is good content. Show it to more people, which grows the channel and encourages us to make more great videos like this. Also, check out the description, right? I have links and additional resources there. The next video is going to be on proof of work versus proof of stake. I'll see you there.